Hey guys, Alec Pierce, Vintage Scuba. Now, you scuba collectors, two host collectors, you will probably recognize this uh, regulator, but I want to talk about it a little bit because if you're not a, basically a dedicated scuba collector, two host collector, you may not recognize it. And for the rest of you regular divers, it'll just be interesting. The dive here. Uh, in 1954, actually this was made prior to 1954, it was made back in the uh, early 50s, 52, 51, 23. In 1954, uh, Dive Air, which had already built up a reasonably good reputation as having a fairly good regulator, uh, you, really, you need to realize that the competition wasn't stiff. If you had a regulator that gave air to the diver four breaths out of five, it went to the top of the heap. <laughs> so they did, however, have a pretty good reputation as a, a very affordable regulator, $37. Now, before you freak, okay, because this regulator is probably worth 700 bucks today. Before you freak and say, $37? Why didn't you buy six of them? Well, that's partly because uh, very few people made $37 a week. Anyway, they were a good regulator. Tell you a few things about them. First of all, all metal can. This is just a formed can. I think you can see it there a little bit if you look at it. Just a tin can, okay? It does have a badge on the top there for you, you folks. You guys that might be watching this interested in buying some of my two horse regulators because that is the reason that I'm actually doing these presentations. I'm selling these and I'm not, I'm not doing this to sell them. I'm doing this to share information and share some interesting stuff, but they will be sold. And uh, so you guys are interested though, you can contact me. You'll see this on eBay, whatever. Uh, you'll see that the badge is perfect. No scratches, no cuts, no tears. It talks about dive air and it says over here, distributed by Healthways, made by Arpin. Yeah, Los Angeles. Another badge on the back that explains how you use it. Compressed air only and, and how you use the reserve valve as a reserve valve. Up on reserve and you put a string through the little hole, string ran down and when you wanted to, to when you got to the end of your air supply, you pull that down and you had another, another extra few minutes. Quite a common feature on quite a few regulators back then. Um, we didn't have submersible pressure gauges so we couldn't monitor our air supply, so a reserve valve was a good idea. Uh, kind of an old-fashioned yoke and yoke screw on there and, and some more printing on the rest of the body. So the, the tin can was sort of the lid, and then the rest of the body was plastic, psycholac. One reason why it was a little less expensive, psycholac, okay? And then the rest was pretty straightforward with two hoses. There are a couple of special things about it. Uh, First of all, this particular model is the plastic model, black plastic model. It's called that. It's called the uh, Dive Air Plastic. And the reason they do that is because there were three models in total, the Dive Air Plastic. But there was also a Dive Air Aluminum, made of cast aluminum. Yeah, it was very nice, very nice. And there was a Dive Air Bronze, made of bronze, cast bronze. We looked at a bronze air regulator a few weeks ago, didn't we? The... Um, the North Hill was cast bronze. It was good material, very heavy, but super material. Uh, the plastic was by far the most common at 3750. You can understand why. Both the cast aluminum and the, and the uh, bronze models were substantially more expensive, so not as many were purchased, and, uh, and so they're quite a bit rarer. So I, I don't know. I'm sure there's still some available, but I, I'd be willing to bet that most of them have been picked up by collectors already. The plastic is not common. This is not a common regulator. I hate the word rare. I really hate the word rare. But uh, I think it probably applies to this regulator. Anyway, plastic, uh, exhaust valve, or the uh, reserve I've already mentioned. Now, the other thing I need to mention, a couple more things. Oh, two things. Yeah, first of all, this is the exhaust. The exhaust came out through the face of this and it was interesting because it had one rubber ring around here. Just one rubber ring which acted as a diaphragm. Now all two hose regs have a diaphragm, a big rubber disc. And when you suck on the intake, the disc moves in, pushes the valve, and you get air. When you stop sucking, the disc moves out, and uh, the airflow stops. And then they have a separate exhaust. So when you blow out the air from the exhaust, which would be uh, this side, I think, or yeah, this side, would go in and it would go out past a little uh, a, a duck bill valve or a little flutter valve of some sort, and your exhausted air would then go out and bubble into the water. And with the dive air, it was interesting, they had one big rubber disc, right? When you sucked in, it was a diaphragm, and it pushed the lever, you got air. When you blew out, the center of that rubber disc 
had a flapper valve in it. So that one rubber disc acted as both a diaphragm for inhalation and as a exhaust valve for exhalation. Yeah. And by the way, that's one reason why these are a little hard to restore, because those rubber discs are not available. Although I do know one chap who has been able to make one out of poured silicone. But anyway, so that was kind of interesting, just had one rubber disc. Technically, that would make it a little bit easier to service. I'm not too sure, but technically at the time. So one, one disc only. The other uh, a couple of things interesting, the hoses. The hoses on these dive airs were, you see, they look short, don't they? They don't look, see, this is behind, this is in front. Well, they look short, but they're not. These are just extremely stretchy. They're more like, it uh, looks like an, uh, um, an accordion, right? Yeah, see, they're very, very stretchy. So a little different than the more common, more standard U.S. divers and uh, Voigt type of hoses. They were the same, U.S. divers and Voigt, uh, with bigger, bigger corrugations in them. These have small corrugations, but they stretch more. A little bit different. And then lastly, at that particular time, what did I say, 54, 55? Right. At that particular time, non-return uh, mouthpieces had not yet been invented. They were not common. A lot of the hoses were just one hose right around. And if you have some of the old diving manuals, and in my old diving manual, in fact, uh, we learned how to clear the hoses on our two-hose regulator by rolling. You have to roll like this so the air goes in and the water rolls out because there were no non-return valves in the mouthpiece. Yeah. If you took the mouthpiece out, the entire hose would flood. And then to take a breath, you had to swallow all the water in the intake hose. It wasn't much fun. But this particular regulator, uh, uh, um, and this is the way it was sold, has this interesting device on the mouthpiece. This is the actual mouthpiece here, the, the bite piece here. Pretty typical. It doesn't look very comfortable, but that's the way they look like. But this particular one has this interesting device on here. This is a Hope page mouthpiece. Now I think we talked about that, didn't we? We talked about the Hope page, but I'm not sure if we looked at this particular one. And Hope page, by the way, is the name of the two men. I'm, I'm mixed it up. I don't, uh, my good friend, Dr. Sam Miller knows these two guys. He actually met them, Mr. Hope and Mr. Page. I forget the first names. I used to know it. But anyway, Mr. Hope and Mr. Page, okay, were a couple of scuba divers and they're very tired of this blowing and sucking and swallowing water stuff. So they sat down one day and said, we can make a mouthpiece so we don't have to do that anymore. And they came up with this mouthpiece called the Hope Page mouthpiece. It was quite popular, actually. And the reason it was popular is simple. Let me slip this off carefully. These hoses are in great condition. I keep all of my vintage regulators sealed in plastic bags. And that's why even though they're 60, 70 years old, they're still in good shape. They come up with this mouthpiece. Now the mouthpiece is made of aluminum, painted black, but what was neat about them is that you could unscrew the end of the mouthpiece, you see? And then in the end of the mouthpiece, can you see that closely there, Kevin? I don't know if you can see that there. There is a, there's the two ends that unscrew. And then in there is this flapper valve. I'll see if I can show you that without hurting it. There's a flapper valve. Can you see that there at all? Yep. Can you see through? Yep. See that flapper valve, you see? So, so this fit in there. And this screwed on top of that, snugly like that, Baba do. That's all there was to it. That's all there was to the whole page. And how did it work? Well, it was really very simple. What that meant was, let me put this back on here carefully. I don't want to hurt this 60-year-old hose. It's in such nice condition. There we go. That on it. With the whole page, when you sucked in, you got air in from the regulator, right? And when you blew out, the water went out through this hose, through the one-way valve. But if you sucked for air, you, no water came back. You can't get back past that one-way valve. One way valve. It only goes out. See? So this was a big, big step forward. Now, Healthways also purchased the rights to the Hope Page mouthpiece. So later versions, which you've seen, it's a little different. and It's a yellow color. And both ends come off. So there was a non-return valve on both sides. Yeah. And uh, that, was, that was it. That was, that was perfect then. Because now the intake is sucked in, and then one way valve face this way. You got air, but no water. And when you blew it, you blew out the water. When you sucked back, you got no, no water coming back in. So it was a big improvement. And then shortly after that, within two or three years, the manufacturers, U.S. Divers, Voigt, and so on, they started making their own non-return mouthpiece, it was called. U.S. Divers called theirs the uh, EZ Clear. E-Z Clear. K-L-E-E-R. They couldn't spell very well back then. 
Anyway, that's called. And so the Hope Page mouthpiece was no longer needed. It was replaced by a factory designed unit. But for about uh, five, six, seven, eight years, maybe, the Hope Page mouthpiece was a big deal. So there you go. A beautiful dive air regulator from uh, 54, 55 in that uh, range, made in LA, distributed by Healthways uh, with the reserve. This is a plastic model, black plastic model, accordion style uh, uh, hoses, and a original Hope, uh, Hope Page mouthpiece. Beautiful piece of diving history. Anyway, there you go. If you have some questions or some comments about this beautiful old uh, scuba regulator, send them to me. I love the comments. Keep them coming. And I'll have some more to show you. Not just regulators, other stuff too. Talk to you soon. Alec Pierce, Vintage Scuba.